So today we're going to be going over the impulse curve and the three tens to a sail. So starting off with the simple impulse curve, the easiest way to show an impulse curve is with three peaks. So you have the one, two, and the three. And on these peaks there is a line in the septum that's called the buying line. So when we do a presentation, someone's impulses will increase as we do our presentation, as we, as we have the gift words in the presentation, the body language and tonality is impulsing them. Up, and you'll have the attention, you have the interest, you have the desire, and then we'll do the close. On the first close, we have an estimation of about 20% of people getting on board the first close. The reason it's only 20% is that through evolution, we've designed to be cautious as creatures. It's the survival of the fist. Those that just ran out, say, using obviously very basic jargon for obviously evolution. Cavemen that used to run out and about used to obviously get killed. So hence, they didn't pass on their genes. So those that survived are ones that were cautious and took their time. So as humans, we are very cautious. So that's why only 20% of people get on board here. Most times someone will have an objection. Now, we'll go on to the three tens on the reason for objections, but if someone has an objection, their impulse will drop down, and we do what we call a deflect. So we don't solve the objection straight away, we do a deflect first. So when we do the deflect, we increase them again. So we deflect them with a question of, sounds like you like the idea of the campaign, yeah? Awesome, true beauty, and then we go into our second presentation. So there's another problem with the interest, another solution with the desire, and then we close them again. 60% of people get on board the second close. Now this not, might not be after the deflect, they might intercept the deflect, you might have to go to the FFF, but a second close will normally have a 60% success rate. The reason is that most people are obviously still listening because they're interested, they just need a bit more information to impulse them over that buying line. Uh, once again, someone has another objection, their impulse will go down, we do the FFF, another interest, another desire, and another presentation because we need to re-impulse them after solving the problem, and then we close them again, and we have about a 20% success rate on the third close. Now, with this impulse, this is a very basic looking one. Obviously, when we break that down to maybe a more accurate impulse curve, we still have the buying line that's up here, but when we're doing a presentation and we're impulsing someone up, what happens is their impulses go up. If they're over the buying line and they haven't got an objection or reason why they think they can't help out, if we close them at this point here, the reason they would be given an objection is because they haven't got over the buying line. In that first diagram, which is a very basic one, it actually shows that you're over the buying line. So the only reason they would give an objection there is if they had a real reason why they couldn't get on board or why they thought they couldn't get on board. So really a more accurate version of the impulse curve is you've impulsed them up, You've closed them, but the problem is they're under the buying line. Otherwise, they would just be saying, yeah, because you'd have them over the buying line. There's no objection. So if someone gives an objection there, that's because obviously they're not over the buying line. They take a tinier dip, and then we do the deflect and the re-impulse, and we go up and we close them again. Once again, they may be over the buying line, or they might be under it. But another objection will come if, obviously, they're not over the buying line, or if there's a reason why, or they think they can't get on boards. <clears throat> Maybe they think they can't afford it, or maybe they need to talk to their partner, so on and so forth. Then what we do is we handle the problem, re-impulse them again, and then close them, and that's why they would get on board. So that's a, probably a little bit more of an accurate depiction if it was free closes. Once again, the impulse curve can change depending on the customer. Obviously, you might do a presentation, they might say yes straight away, and that's because you've got them over the buying line, and there's no objection in the way. You might get them over the buying line and or just underneath the buying line there's no real objection there's just they're not over the line they give an objection you might do a full deflect which gets them over the buying line and then they say yeah because there isn't an objection that's there uh, otherwise you might have one that looks like this you close them first they're not over the buying line they give an objection uh, obviously you're getting them a little bit closer once again this might be over the buying line and you close them but they've got an objection that you need to resolve you resolve it and obviously continue them up over the buying line and close them uh, the important thing to keep an eye on the impulse curve is that we need to do our re-impulses. Uh, so that's another presentation, another problem, another solution, and then to close. What a lot of people do is they might handle an objection and try and close straight away because they're a little bit desperate, they want that sale. But if you do that, imagine if, on this curve, say if I use a purple or a green pen just to see the distinction, you've done the presentation, closed them, they've said, can't afford it, you re-impulse them, and they get to here, they still say they can't afford it, 
And then what you do is you handle the objection. So the objection's out the way now. All you have to do is get them over the buying line. But you, what you do is you just close them straight away. And they still say no. All they needed was that little bit more of a presentation. Giving them more impulsing isn't going to lose their, obviously, their impulse to buy. As long as you're obviously keeping them straight in line, you're not talking too much or going off and not using the right impulse factors. So that's the impulse curve. Now, the impulse curve for me is obviously a bit more of an outdated version. It's a nice idea to understand why we need re-impulsing. But it's not, I think, uh, the clearest way to see why we do objection handling. For me, it's all about the free tens to a presentation. So the free tens, these talk about the free tens of certainty. Jordan Balfour talks about this a lot in his Wolf of Wall Street book and his Straight Line Persuasion. There's free tens, there's free continuums going from zero to ten. With these free continuums, these are based on certainty. Zero having no certainty whatsoever. 10 being absolute certainty, though they bet their house on it, they're that certain of it, it's such a strong belief. You have three different categories. One is the product. Now the videos I'm doing here are for my up team, but this can be any type of product. If you're selling a car, or selling a house, or selling a vacuum, door to door, or whatever, that's your product. For my guys, we do fundraising. So obviously our product is obviously what the charities do, so the services of the charity. So where the money goes. And the other side of that product is that it's monthly donations. Obviously you might have also people that go out and about that are doing bucket collections and that would be 50% of it. But that's your product. You're looking for monthly support and the service is what they're supporting. The next one is the person. So that's us. So as a sales agent, are we trustworthy? Are we an expert or are we an amateur that someone that's a little bit sleazy? And number 10, the last one is company. Cool, so the company that you're representing. So if you're representing a great company that has amazing ethics that do exactly, obviously, like a great reputation and so on, they don't employ shitheads, right? They employ, obviously, people that know exactly what they're talking about. So by working for a great company or representing an amazing company that has a great reputation, we automatically already get them pretty high on the continuums here of certainty because they don't employ shitheads, as we say. Once again, company of a great reputation that employs great people doesn't obviously do a shoddy product or rarely does a shoddy product normally it's a pretty good value for money so when we do a presentation when someone answers the door or when someone engages it in a sale process whether they're coming into the car lot looking at a house anything like that what happens is they'll fall somewhere on this continuum and they'll fall somewhere on this continuum through the first four seconds uh, that you've shown and presented yourself and also due to past experiences so let's say, for example, if we follow on the fundraising side, obviously, for our company, someone answers the door and they've had, uh, they love monthly donations, they love charity, they've signed up with people at the doors, they're going to be falling pretty high on these scales, obviously, with the charities that we represent are pretty high and really reputable. So they're going to fall pretty high, but say if they've had a bad experience with a sales rep before, or maybe someone that sold a car to you or someone that sold a house and they've had real bad experiences, that might put you further down on the scale of person where the product might still be high and the company might still be high. So there's these different factors. But what happens is someone falls on the continuum. Let's say, for example, they fall here. So they fall at a seven, a five, and a seven. So yeah, cool. So during our presentation, just like in the impulse curve where we go up, during our attention, interest, desire, and action, what we're doing is actually moving them across these continuums. How we do that is through the words yeah, obviously what we're actually saying, and then how we say them, body language and tonality. We're going to go in that another section, but that makes up 90% of a presentation, body language and tonality. So if you're doing the right body language and tonality and have the best words, you then are obviously forcing this up the continuum as best as possible. What happens is during your presentation, you'll force them up the continuum and then you'll do the first close. Now during the first close, like we say, only 20% of people get on board anyway. But what happens is... If someone's at a 10, a 10, and a 10, then you've got a good chance of closing them. If one of those, just one of those, isn't at a 10 out of 10, you've got no chance. So just because they're at 10 out of 10 doesn't mean you're definitely making the sale, just means you've got a very good chance. But if one of them isn't, you've got no chance whatsoever. So let's say, for example, we do our first presentation and we do the close, and product is up to nine, person's maybe up to seven, and company's up to nine as well. You do the close and they give you an objection. Now, most of these objections are what we call smoke screens. So the reason they give an objection is because it's better than the truth. Because let's think of it this way. Let's say the company's 10 out of 10, the product's 10 out of 10, and they just don't trust you. You think they're a little bit sleazy and inexperienced maybe. So someone that's inexperienced is a bit sleazy. Is it easier for them to A, say, Look, mate, obviously love the product, love the company, would love to get on board. I just don't trust you. I think you're a little bit sleazy and actually you look like a bit like an amateur. That's option one. Or they could say option two, which is, 
nah, man, I don't know if I can afford it. Which one's easier to say? Of course, option B, right? So they're gonna go with that. It's a smoke screen hiding what they're true, truly saying. So what we do is we don't jump to doing a objection handle solving an issue, because you might be solving an issue that isn't really there. All they're telling you is that just one of these isn't there or a mixture isn't. So what we do is we loop it. We use the deflex and so we go, Look, I hear what you're saying, uh, but sounds like you like the idea of the campaign, yeah? Or anything along those lines. So that's a re-engaging question. Sounds like you like the idea of the campaign. Uh, this is the type of project you like, right? Obviously, I can see that you like this type of car, this type of house, blah, 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 blah. You like, obviously, what we're doing. You like this type of decor, blah, blah, whatever you're selling, yeah? Re-engaging with that with a yeah at the end. They're going to say yeah, and then you re-engage them and resell them. If they're not interested whatsoever, they'll tell you, look, I'm not interested. Or then they'll change to a no. Like, oh, look, no, I don't like this type of house. Cool. Obviously, if they don't want it, you're not going to sell to them. But if they're saying yes to that, they're trying to say, look, I am interested because I'm still here. If I'm not, I would have shown body language, clear signs to say I'm not interested and I would have shot off. But I'm still here, so obviously I'm interested. So what you do is you then do another presentation, interest to direction. What happens is you force them up the line again. So let's say at this point, we've got to a 10 out of 10 here. We've got to a 10 out of 10 here, but this one's still at a nine. Once again, what are they gonna say? They're not gonna give you the truth and say, I still just don't trust you. I'm still just a little bit uncertain about you. They're gonna give another smoke screen. What we do again, loop it, and then go through and close. Once we got them to 10 out of 10s, we close for that third time. If they're still a no, might be because we haven't got them to the 10 out of 10s, or maybe we've got them to the 10 out of 10s. There's just an objection that we've tried to give a solution for, but maybe just that solution isn't good enough for them. Look, we're not gonna win every single battle, but that's obviously what you try your best to do. So this is the continuance of the three tens, and this makes it very easy to understand that when objection comes, they're not real. Like, obviously, people can afford stuff. When The amount of times that people have bought shit when they can't afford it anyway, just because they want it. Yeah, so that's obviously, once again, you have to work ethically. If someone isn't the right type of quality customer, if we talked in other areas, don't sign them up. Same for anything you're selling. If the person doesn't really want it, don't use your skills of persuasion and motivation to get them on board. Obviously, understand to target the right type of customer, you have to do this ethically. But at the same time, when they give you objections, normally it's just not true. If they give you a second objection, a lot more of the times if they repeat the objection or say a second objection, that's normally the real objection. So you can then give them a solution to that, offer a smaller amount, maybe a different payment type, blah, 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 whichever product you're selling or what options that you have for your solution. Sometimes it works, sometimes it just won't be good enough for them. But that's why we always do the deflect first. The reason is, is you don't want to devalue your product. For example, imagine I'm selling a car, sold it to the person, the customer's really interested, and I go, cool man, this car's $10,000. And the customer just isn't quite at these 10 out of 10s, and they go, oh look, I just don't know if I can afford it. Imagine if I just went, uh, 5,000 and just straight away drop the amount. The person's gonna be like, what the fuck's up with that car? Yeah, they're gonna obviously not trust you, it devalues the car. So what all we do is re-engage and retell them. If they then a second time go, look, yeah, I am really interested, I'm just a little bit unsure on price, then we can go, look, okay, what I can do is give you a smaller amount or I can do a payment plan like this or I can throw this in for free. And you add extra value, you give them a solution that you can. It shows that you're not desperate and it shows that you're actually doing them in good favor going, okay, cool, I can believe you're really generally interested, here's an extra value. It will actually show that you're a lot more of an expert and obviously it will do this job self-sufficient. So those are the three tens, guys. That's the impulse curve. That's why we follow that model. We don't want to handle an objection that isn't real. It's just smoke screens and it's just force them up those lines with obviously our presentation. So body language and tonality is the key to that and making sure the right words are being said. But once again, make sure you do this ethically.